I'm the uh, coordinator for this year's orientation. Um, I'm a third year biology student. And today we have our chemistry session. We have three wonderful speakers here. We have uh, Dr. Mike Katz, who will be um, speaking to you. We have Justin Pittman, the chemistry advisor. And we also have a member of the Chemistry Society, President Hannah George. So with that said, you guys can get started whenever you're ready. All right, how's it going everybody? Um, I'll start by making sure, can you guys see the correct side of the correct screen? Justin, give me a thumbs up if you're okay, everything looks good. Um, I was in a meeting where for some somebody only had their uh, presenter view and I was like, that's not gonna work. All right. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing okay today. So I want to talk a little bit about the chemistry program here at MUN and hopefully be able to answer some of any questions you guys might have. Um, this is a slide we sort of use every year. So with any luck, uh, I nothing has changed too drastically. Um, so yeah, so there's lots of degree options in chemistry. Uh, and one of the reasons to do chemistry is because with a chemistry degree, you can actually end up in lots of different positions. So there's lots of places that you can go starting with chemistry. You know, a lot of people sort of think sort of that what I could consider the traditional things. You become a researcher or a teacher or a professor, but actually there's tons of other directions you can go with it. Uh, you can go into law, you can go into patent law. So if you uh, have a chemistry background, that means you're uniquely qualified to look at patents that come out of chemistry departments and say, well, hold on, this is not right or this is not, you know, this is not actually that novel. And so that gives you a huge amount of skills that a lot of patent lawyers don't have. Most of the patent lawyers that I've ever had to deal with are always engineers and they look at chemistry in a totally weird way compared to chemists do. So there's lots of opportunities there. Uh, forensic science. So my uncle, when he got his chemistry degree before he taught chemistry was in uh, a forensic lab for a while. Um, he enjoyed it until he spent more time testifying in court than he did in the lab itself. So I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's just a true story. Um, you go to medicine, so a lot of chemistry graduates we have end up actually going on to doing medicine at Mon or at other universities. And some of them end up doing medical research, some just become uh, doctors. And we have plenty of chemists uh, that sort of that I know that have come out of my lab and come out of neighboring labs that have done this. Um, administration, so you can go into government, private uh, sector. You can start creating policy as you understand more and more chemistry of the environment and other systems, you can start saying, well, hold on a second, we need to start changing the way uh, the government and the policies are in place. That gives you a lot of opportunities. Now, I could go through all of these other sort of opportunities, but there's so much you can do just with a simple chemistry degree or even an advanced chemistry degree. And of course, at this stage, you're more thinking, do I get a chemistry degree or a physics degree? There's lots of great reasons to go into any department, but chemistry really does open up a lot of windows and a lot of opportunities. Um, so I, I hope I've convinced you that it's it's not such a narrow thing where you're just like, well, I don't want to be a researcher, a teacher, or a professor. Why would I go into chemistry? Well, there's lots of things you can do with it. Uh, let me, all right, my slides are stuck. Come on, there we go. So currently we have, we have formally have three degree options in chemistry. I think currently the computational chemistry program is a bit on hold because we have to hire a new computational chemist. But we have a chemistry program, so sort of very traditional chemistry program. And then we have a chemistry biological program, and that sort of it, uh, pulls in some classes from biology to give you a bit more of a biology background, but it's still primarily a chemistry course. Each program is fully accredited by the Chemical Institute of Canada, so it's an accredited, accredited program. And each program can be completed as a general or an honors degree. And so honors degree requires a grade of B or better, or an overall average of 75 in sort of most of your science courses above the first year. And then in an honors degree, we also add sort of two semesters of research projects. So you'll spend, you know, two semesters in one of the chemistry labs, and some people might even do it in other labs, where you'll get a chance to sort of do research and try your hand at research. Because until you really get into the labs, it's very easy to think you know what research looks like. You have all of these undergrad labs that you're doing, but Real research, we don't know what the answer is going to be. And every day is sort of you're exploring something new. And so the honors program really gives you an opportunity to sort of test this out at the very least in, in this two semester research project. But there's lots of other opportunities to get into the labs. And I think it's I would strongly encourage students to always get into the labs as early as possible to see what kind of chemistry is out there and what kind of research is being done at MUN, because we do some very interesting and very cool research. Um, 
So some people often ask, would taking a course like Chem 1010 or Math 1090 set you behind? So Chem 1010 is our, you know, before first year, before 1050 chemistry class. It's designed to give you the foundation of chemistry knowledge that you need to enter university chemistry. And so if you haven't taken Chemistry 12, or it's been a while since you've taken Chemistry 12, or even if you're a little bit unsure about that material, by taking Chemistry 1010, you really sort of build this foundation. And that actually gives you, you know, even though it's one extra semester, it gives you this foundation that really makes it easier to take 1050, 1051, and all the other, all the other courses. Same with Math 1090. And we still have options where you'll be able to take Chemistry 1010, still catch up with Chemistry 1050 and 1051, not have to take a summer semester if you don't want to, and still be done in four years if that's your goal. So we've made it possible to accomplish that in chemistry. Um, there are some sample type timetables involving chemistry 1010 that are in the undergraduate handbook. Uh, they're also on the chemistry department webpage if you look for them. And we've set it up that you can do this in four years, two semesters only. You don't have to work in the summer if you don't want to. Of course, nothing stops you from catching up on a course here and there in the summer if, uh, if you want to get ahead on things. All right, so here's sort of a little bit of a picture of what uh, the difference between a majors and an honors program is. And this is just a sample uh, calendar and what you would do. You could do it in four years. I really want to say that if you are struggling, I remember when I was a student, taking five courses my first semester was too much for me. So I took four courses in my first few semesters, and that really allowed me to get the knowledge that I needed as a student rather than trying to finish my degree faster. Now, of course, don't let me stop you from taking five courses if you're comfortable and good at taking five courses, but don't think about it as a four year program. Think about it as the knowledge you're gaining and how far that knowledge is going to take you. So really it's a focus of knowledge, not a focus of just, I wanna graduate and get out and get a job. The skills you learn in the labs and the skills you learn in chemistry will go much, much further than the grades that you got in your, in your classes. So, so focus on learning as much as possible. So here's two timetables on what it would look like if you just get a majors in chemistry. You can see that by the end of your third year, the fourth year is just all electives. Um, and what you'll see if you do an honors, you'll see that by the time you get to your fourth year, you're doing your 490 and your 490B. These are your chemistry research programs. So you'll take two semesters of research in the lab. And then we do add up a couple more chemistry at the 4,000 level uh, that you need to take. But for the most part, that's the, that's the major differences. And I'll, I can leave this up or if you, I think all of it's available online. I won't spend too much time talking about this. Here's what it looks like for biology majors versus bi chemist or chemistry biological versus majors versus honors. Very sort of similar looking thing where what happens is, is towards the end, you just have a lot more freedom in a major to take uh, electives. Um, there's two, there's lots of different ways to look at it. I do not have an honors in chemistry. I have a major in chemistry and I don't have a minor, but I nearly have a minor in physics, nuclear science, and I think math. Maybe, maybe math. And part of it is because I found all of those topics very interesting. So rather than focusing on a minor, I focused on lots of different courses that I thought was interesting. And of course, I had to do a major in chemistry instead of an honor in chemistry because of that. And so there's lots of different ways to gain all the skills and, and all of your interests. Um, and there's no right or wrong way. Of course, nothing stops you from being a major and still taking chemistry 490A and 490B. It's just that you still will only graduate with a major in chemistry instead of an honor in chemistry. Uh, this is what the computational chemistry major program is. If any of you are starting in this program and are interested in this program, don't worry about the fact that we currently don't have a computational chemist to teach the more advanced course towards the end, because by the time you get to this stage, I guarantee you will have that person hired. We are already in the process of looking, so it's pretty easy to uh, to get this. So don't let don't don't stop yourself from taking a computational chemistry major. There's computational chemistry is one of those interesting fields of chemistry where instead of being in the lab mixing chemicals you're in a computer and you're asking yourself well why are these things reacting with each other what can i learn about this and so if being in the lab and working with chemicals scares you and certainly scares my wife but she's a dance instructor so it makes sense uh computational chemistry might be right up your alley computational chemistry is not up my wife's alley though but uh but it might be in yours um justin somebody typed something in the chat you might want to I can't see the chat, thank you. So that's how the computational chemistry program, program works. Um, lots of opportunities to do joint honors. So there's a joint honors in chemistry and applied math, chemistry, biochemistry, chemistry, earth science, chemistry, physics. So if you're interested in doing joint honors, you can. 
Uh, you can do a chemistry minor. So if you're interested in, you know, getting a physics major or any major and you say, I still want chemistry, um, then what you can do is you can just take these chemistry courses and it gets you a minor in chemistry. All the information we have is available on the chemistry webpage or MUN's web pages. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, you can email the academic program officer who's currently Justin Pittman for as, as long as the airlines won't let him leave. Um, and the things I had to do to make that happen, we probably shouldn't even talk about. Uh, but you can also reach out to me as the deputy head of undergraduate studies. And of course, you can always contact any chemistry faculty member. They'll always be able to help or at least point you in the right direction. Um, if you're interested in their research or if you're interested in anything, no faculty member is not eager to show you their lab, talk about their research, or you know, tell you about how wonderful chemistry is. And every chemist here sort of has a different background, has come from different cities and countries and has different experiences. So, you know, there's 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 always a right person to contact and there's always a right person to talk to about anything you have. So I think that is all of my slides. And I guess if you guys have any questions for me or if you uh, want me to go back and show, uh, put anything on the screen, just let me know. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Katz. Um, so that's a lot of important information for students to know. So um, if you do want us to go back to a slide or if you have any questions you want to add, uh, ask personally, you can always email uh, Justin or Dr. Katz. Um, so it looks like Justin is answering some questions in the chat there. Um, and then another super important part of, you know, joining chemistry or any other department in science is uh, besides, you know, the courses you're taking and all that is actually what you can do as a student and student societies and stuff like that. So we asked uh, Hannah, who is the president of Chem Society, to come and speak to you guys a little bit about that, um, to just offer some insight about student life here at MUN as a chemistry student. Hi guys, so um, we're starting to put together some events for everybody. We want to get everyone involved, especially first year students. So you definitely don't need to be a chemistry major if you want to come to the events and just check it out if you're just interested in joining chemistry. Um, we're planning on having an event almost every Friday, like different mixers or fundraisers in the morning. Like we have grilled cheese breakfasts and different things like that. And we're looking at planning a bonfire and stuff like that. So you can definitely follow our society page on Facebook for information about all of the events. And currently we have a trivia night coming up on Wednesday, the first day of school, I'm pretty sure. So you can look at that on our Facebook page. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to message me or email me. Yeah, so definitely lots of fun events that you guys can attend as, you know, uh, first year students or second year students who are thinking of going into chemistry or if you're just a general student right now, um, that is A-OK. -okay. Um, I'd also like to me mention, um, just because obviously if you're here at this session right now, you're definitely interested in chemistry, that we do have another chemistry session being held tomorrow that is more based on one of the professor's research. Um, so Dr. Chris Kozak will be holding a session tomorrow to teach you guys about some uh, research in chemistry here at MUN, if you guys want to join that, it's going to be super interesting. And he's also going to be showing you guys some of the labs in the core science facility. Um, so definitely join that if you guys are interested. Um, we also want to let you guys know um, that as you know, students who are coming to MUN for the first time and you know, you've never really walked around, we do have tours available for you guys this Saturday and Sunday that you can register for. Um, we'll be showing you guys some important places to know as a science student, as well as just a general first year student. Um, so if you guys are interested in any of that, uh, I would recommend signing up. So it doesn't look like we have any other questions. If students wanna turn their mic on and uh, ask questions, you're free to do that. Um, other than that, if there's no questions to ask or if Dr. Cass or Justin don't have anything else to uh, put in, that would be the end of our chemistry session. This doesn't look like there's any other questions. So I do wanna thank you guys for just, you know, speaking a little bit about chemistry. I know sometimes it's hard to anticipate how many students are gonna come to these things, especially with the last weeks of, um, summer, you know, coming to an end and with COVID and everything. So thanks for taking time out of your days, to, you know, just hop on for a couple of minutes and speak to us about that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording there now and thank you all for coming on.
Thanks, everybody. And if you guys